Thank you for loving our previous JAWS screen reader video. It encouraged me to create a new video on NVDA. Today, I'll show you how NVDA works and how it's different from JAWS. Watch this video to uncover the key differences between NVDA and JAWS. And comment what's your favorite screen reader. Is it NVDA or JAWS? NVDA or Non-Visual Desktop Access is a free open source screen reader that enables visually impaired users to interact with digital content. Developed by NV Access, it's one of the most widely used screen reader globally. NVDA stands out because it's free and that's our difference number one. JAWS is a paid screen reader starting at roughly $90 per year for home editions. They do offer free versions, but you have to restart your machine every 40 minutes, which to me is annoying. It is super easy to get started with NVDA. Simply go to nvaccess.org and download the latest version. Installation just takes few minutes and you are ready to explore. Hi, I'm Param Singh, a certified professional in web accessibility. And my mission is to help you create and test accessible websites for all. If you're passionate about accessibility, hit that subscribe button and stick around for more practical insights. Now let's dive into the life of a screen reader user. Unlike sighted users, they rely entirely on their keyboard and auditory cues provided by screen readers such as NVDA. Before we begin, let's turn on the speech viewer of NVDA because it will help us see what NVDA is announcing making it easier for us to debug an issue. JAWS also offers a text viewer, but it displays one row at a time. Also, getting to history is slightly challenging in JAWS, and that's our difference number two. Moving on, NVD offers two primary modes, browse mode and focus mode. Each is designed for different type of content and interactions. Let's break them down. Browse mode. It is optimized for reading and navigating static or text heavy content such as web pages, emails or documents. Key features are browse mode allows quick navigation using single key shortcuts. For example, H for headings, L for links and T for tables. It reads the content in a linear top to bottom manner, similar to how sighted user would scan a page. NVDA or JAWS automatically switches to browse mode when navigating a web page or opening a new document. Best use cases are for reading articles, reviewing emails, and navigating through general web page structures. Focus mode. It enables interaction with interactive elements like forms, buttons, and custom widgets. Key features are it allows the user to directly interact with the input fields, buttons, dropdowns, and other controls. It temporarily disables browse mode single key shortcuts to avoid conflicts with input tasks. Example, when typing in a text box, you want to write a letter H rather than jumping to another heading on the page. It is automatically activated when a user focuses on an input field or an interactive element. Best use cases are filling out forms, interacting with widgets, or performing complex tasks like entering data into a spreadsheet. Any guesses what's the first thing a screen reader users hear? Yes, you got it right. It's the page title. This is how they know where they are when they are working with multiple tabs or applications. And this is why it's critical to have a unique title tag to help screen reader users. Pro tip. Use unique name, vertical bar website as the title format. For example, sign up, vertical bar, YouTube. NVDA by default is in the browse mode or read mode. And that's why when a page is first loaded or is refreshed, NVDA starts by reading the page title. Then it goes on to announce how many regions, headings and links are there on the page. And then continues reading the entire page unless you perform any action. Pro tip, use control key to stop NVDA from reading. And same is true for any other screen reader. Let's have a listen together for the title tag used on four different websites. Homepage, 
Disability in Google Chrome, Parampreet. Skills Singh, Web Accessibility Expert, CPWA. Instagram, Google Chrome, Parampreet. NVDA Demo Skills Singh, Google Chrome, Parampreet. For all the four websites that we tried, NVDA announced the page title first. Let me ask you this. What's the first thing that you do when you visit a new website? Yes, you scan the entire page and your focus is mainly on the headings, which helps you better understand the page. Similarly, a screen reader user often presses the H key to jump from one heading to another, helping them better understand the page structure. Let's have a listen together when a new page is loaded. Disability in link skip to content visited link graphic disability in main navigation navigation landmark button collapse toggle navigation list with six items link who we are button collapsed open submenu of who we are link what we do button collapsed open submenu of what we do link resources button collapsed open submenu of resources link news and events out of list Clickable main navigation navigation landmark list with six items button now collapsed I'm gonna open press control key of news to and stop events. screen reader from Link reading. C. The moment I pressed control key, NVDA stopped reading the entire page. Now let's use H keyboard key to jump from one heading to another on disability in home page. Home. Main landmark we empower over 500 leading companies to achieve disability inclusion and equality. Heading level 2. As you heard and saw in the speech viewer, NVDA ends the heading by announcing what was the heading level. Now I'm gonna press H keyboard key again. Champions for Change, a global celebration with disability in heading level 2. Again, it's ending by saying what is the heading level. And if I do Shift H, we empower over 500 leading companies to achieve disability inclusion and equality. It took heading me to the two. previous heading on the same page. Now let's try for the different regions on this page. And for NVDA, you have to use D, D as in Denmark on your keyboard key. Content info landmark who we are heading level two. Search landmark search. It's jumping from one landmark to another. Go to top region, go to top link. No next landmark. And once you reach the bottom of the sections where there is no for the landmark or heading it says no next landmark in this situation you can use shift and d content info landmark search landmark search it takes you to the previous landmark on the same page next let's move on to the forms and input fields for this i'll be using a very basic form that i prepared for you guys Let's start with the basic controls such as input field text box. Main landmark. Full name is a required field edit blank. Has auto complete. Now NVDA announced the linked label which is full name. For star I used an aria label is a required field. And then it announces whether it is empty or there is some data in the text box. Followed by has auto complete. Let's move on to the next one, which is not a required field. Date of birth expected format mm slash dd slash yyyy edit blank. Now, because on the screen we have dob and it could be challenging for people with cognitive disabilities, I have defined an aria label saying date of birth and then I am calling out what is the expected format and the format is mm dd yyyy. Let's move on to the next one, which is our radio groups. Select your sex. Grouping. Male radio button not checked one of two. As you heard, it is calling out what is the label? What is the current radio option? How many radio options are available in this group? And whether it is checked or not checked. Let's make a selection of male. Space. Checked. And I did it by pressing the spacebar key. Now let's move on to the next control which is a drop down. Select a color. Combo box USA collapsed. The interesting thing to note here is it is announcing what is the current state of the drop down. 
in this scenario it called out collapsed and i'm only using my keyboard for the entire activity i'm gonna press spacebar key to open up the drop down space expanded list usa one of three the moment i opened it using the spacebar key it is calling out it is in the expanded state with the list how many items are there and what is the first item pardon my label because i'm using state country names instead of colors now i'm gonna use my up or down arrow key to navigate through the list india not selected two of three uk not selected three of three and to make a selection i'll simply press the enter key select a color combo box uk collapsed and the moment i did that it is saying select a color which is the label for this drop down and then it announces what is the current value selected and what is the current state now let's move on to the next which is our check box group your favorite brand grouping gap check box not checked and now i'm gonna use the tab key to go over the three different options tommy check box not checked h and m check box not checked and i can make a selection by pressing either the space check. bar key or by Tommy entering check box not checked or by using the entry checked key. let's continue let's move on to the next link on this page h and m i have read terms and conditions opens in a new window visited link key thing to note here is because i'm using an external icon i'm using an aria label as well which says opens in a new window and whether it is visited versus unvisited link additional aria label opens in a new window helps people understand if they press enter on this link they will be navigated to either to a new tab or a new window so this is why it is important to have an aria label for all the external links now for buttons it's announcing what is visible on the page and its type at the end it says button same as the case with next button save your preferences button complimentary landmark edit picture visited link because this image and link is part of the complimentary landmark or commonly known as a site nvda announced it up front and then it announced what is the link and whether it is visited or unvisited next let's see how nvda users uses the g keyboard key to jump from one graphic to another so i'm gonna press g keyboard key g as in germany complimentary landmark and avatar of a sikh man wearing a brown turban graphic interestingly it always announces graphic at the end so that's why the best practices are to avoid keywords such as images screenshot or graphics in your alt text for images let me press g one more time no next graphic and because we do not have any other graphic on the page it announces no next graphic for tables let's use w3c's tables with one header examples to directly jump to a table i'm gonna press t t as in tiger to jump to the next table on this page complimentary landmark teddy bear collectors table with four rows and three columns caption teddy bear collectors so a screen reader announces what is the table caption how many rows are there and how many columns are in present in that table i'm gonna use alt control and down arrow key row 2 february 12th it announces row 2 and what is the value of the cell i'm gonna use control alt and right arrow key event column to waltz with strauss as you heard it announces the column header along with the column number and the actual value i'm gonna press alt control and write again venue column three main hall again the same thing it announces the column header column number and the actual value if i do not press control and alt and simply press the left or right arrow key okay. it will only read the next character in that section so let's do control alt and down arrow key Row now three west wing and do the left one to go back to the previous values event column to the obelisk it reads the column name column number and value date column 1 march 24th and then so Row on for april 14th event column to the what let's see if we have any other table on this page complimentary landmark table with three rows and four columns row one column one date 
again it announces the table caption how many rows and columns are there and i'm gonna use Control alt and down arrow key row to event it announces what is the next value in next row i'm gonna use Control alt and right column two waltz with strauss column three the obelisks so this is how you operate using a combination of Control alt up down left right arrow keys to navigate through a table did you know nvda is used by over 65 percent of screen reader users worldwide versus 60 percent of jaws users according to the latest webaim survey this signifies a major shift in the screen reader landscape this chain highlights the growing preferences for cost effective easy to use and community driven tools like nvda drop a comment below what surprised you the most about nvda and don't forget to like this video your support helps spread awareness about accessibility if you ask me about the ease of use between nvda and jaws it's much easier to use nvda and is best suited for beginners however jaws is really powerful with some advanced feature for professionals nvda is popular among individuals schools and non-profits due to its affordability as compared to jaws which is commonly used by larger enterprises as you have seen nvda is more than just a tool it's a lifeline for millions of visually impaired users by understanding how it works and testing your website with it you are taking the big step to world building an inclusive digital world subscribe to this channel for weekly tips tutorials and case studies together we can make the web accessible for everyone this is param singh signing off until next time keep learning keep testing and keep breaking the accessibility barriers